Hello guys, it's MashTech here. Welcome back to this video. Today we're gonna install simple menu to our RG350s and set it up together. In this video we're gonna focus on the basics. So I will show you how to assign the emulators to the menu, how to set up the ROMs directory and add box arts to your systems. Enjoy! First of all, let's download the latest version of Simple Menu. Therefore, I put you a link into the video description and if you follow that link, it will take you to this GitHub repository page of FGL82 where you can download the latest release of Simple Menu. As the time I'm making this video, we're on release number 5.5. .5. If you scroll down just a bit, you will find the assets section down here where you will find three different versions of Simple Menu. As you can see, Simple Menu doesn't just run on the RG350, it's also available for the Pocket Go 2 and the RG300. So if you own any of these devices beside your RG350 and you would like to have the same look and feel on all of your devices, you might want to download and try it out for these two. Additionally, this is the place where you will find some themes like you see up here the GBZ35 Remix theme and the Megapixel theme. But I'm gonna focus on the themes in a different video. So for now we're gonna download the simple menu rg350.opk file. So simply left click on it, wait until the download has complete, change over to your download folder. And that's it, now we've downloaded Simple Menu for our RG350. All we have to do is just to transfer it over to our RG350. And therefore I just gonna open up WinSCP, change to your Media Data Apps folder. And simply drag and drop the Simple Menu minus RG350.opk file right into your Media Data Apps folder. And that's it. Now we've installed Simple Menu to our RG350. Alright guys, now let's switch over to our RG350 and start Simple Menu. Therefore, switch to the application section and scroll all the way down until you find the Simple Menu icon. Press the A button to start Simple Menu. And now Simple Menu creates all the necessary files and folders uh, on your RG350 that we require to configure it. So for now we can press the start button and quit simple menu again and continue configuring it from our PC. Alright, now before we actually start configuring simple menu, let me show you the files that we need to touch. Therefore, connect to your RG350 using WinSCP and navigate to a folder called Media Data Local Home. And this folder should now contain a dot simple menu folder. If you don't see any of these dot folders, these are hidden folders, go to your settings in WinSCP, choose settings and go to list window. And there you want to make sure that show hidden files is being turned on. Alternatively, you can simply press Ctrl Alt H to activate showing hidden folders. So I can show you, if you press that, you can turn it off and on. So be sure you can see your hidden folders and if you don't see the simple menu folder here, you might wanna refresh up here. Okay, now we're gonna enter the simple menu folder and from here you can see we have a couple of folders in here and a couple of files. So we want to focus on the sections group. So let's enter this folder. And as you can see for each section that simple menu provides us, we're going to have a representative.ini file. So this is the configuration file that we want to touch for the associated section. As we have here apps and games, arcades, consoles, handhelds and home computers. Now let me guide you through the config steps using the example of the SNES system. Since the SNES is a console, we find its entry in the consoles.ini file. So let's open it up and take a closer look to its content. 
As you can see on the very top, there is a tag called consoles that contains a list of systems that will be shown in the console section within Simple Menu, followed by detailed entries for each system. You can adapt this list to your personal needs. So, if you never make use of a specific system, you can shorten the list by removing the system you don't need. I recommend you to put a hash in front of the original line to make Simple Menu ignore it and create a new line with the systems you like to keep shown up in Simple Menu. If you later decide to re-add systems again, you can use this line as backup so you know what names you have to add back to the active list. Now let's take a closer look to the SNES entry. The tag has further entries such as access, ROM directories and ROM extensions. The access key defines the emulators you want to use with the system here. So for example, if you have different versions of Pocket SNES or you use different emulators for one and the same system, you can add them here, comma separated, as you can see here in the Sega Genesis tag. Here we got two different emulators to emulate the Sega Genesis system and some ROMs might run better or only with a specific emulator. So that's why Simple Menu allows us to define multiple emulators for one system and I really like that feature. I will later show you how to select one of the emulators for your ROM. The next key is the ROMs directory and again this entry allows us to define multiple folders where you can store the ROMs for your system. And this is another great feature since now we can make use of subfolders that can be listed up here to organize your ROMs in the file system as well. For example, if you keep organizing your ROMs in folders like RPG, Action, Adventure, Jump and Run and so on, you can keep that folder structure on your RG350 and simply list up all the folders here separated by commas. The last entry we have to touch to configure the system is the ROM extensions. That means if your emulator supports multiple file extensions or formats of the ROMs, you can add the extensions here so Simple Menu can find the associated ROMs to list them up. For example, if you have SNES ROMs with the .sfc and .smc extension, you should add these extensions to the list so Simple Menu will find both of them. So these are the entries we have to touch to configure an emulator system in Simple Menu. Now let me demonstrate it to you with a real example. Now let's stay with the SNES example and finish the configuration of it together. Let me show you a simple way to verify the location of your emulators and ROMs between the config files and the file system on your RG350. In general, your emulators should be located in the Media Data Apps folder. If this is the case, we just need to ensure that the name of the .opk file is correct. Therefore, I navigate to that folder in WinSCP by opening up another connection task. Now, I can go through the list of emulators and verify the names. If a name differs, we have two options to solve it. We either correct the name in the .ini file here, or we rename the opk file in the media data apps folder. I put you a link to the emulators for the RG350 into the video description in case you still miss some. Simply copy them into your media data apps folder. Now that you have the folder open, I'd recommend you to check the entries for all other systems you like to use as well. But for now, let's continue. Now that the path and the name to our pocket snes.opk file matches with the entry in the consoles.ini file, we should now tell Simple Menu where it can find the ROMs for the SNES. Therefore, I open another connection task in WinSCP and navigate to the ROMs folder on my SD card. This is where I store all the ROMs for my emulator systems. As you can see, here is the folder that contains all my SNES ROMs. Now we want to set the name of this folder in our consoles.ini file in the SNES section. And that's it! We've configured our first system in Simple Menu. 
Use this method for all other systems until you have them all configured. It's a straightforward process. Now last but not least, let's add some box arts to our ROMs. This is a pretty easy step. I expect you already have the box art images for your ROMs ready. If you don't have them yet, check out my video in the info box up here, where I show you step by step how to get the box art images for your ROMs using Scraper. I have the box art images ready for my SNES games in the folder over here. So all we have to do is to create a subfolder in the folder that contains our ROMs with the name media. Jump right into that folder and drag and drop the image files right into it. I will fast forward this step for you guys. And done. Now let's finally take a look at the result and switch over to our RT350. Alright guys, now here we are at our RT350, let's wake it up and use the shoulder button to switch over to the application section up here. Use the d-pad to scroll all the way down until you find this simple menu icon. Press start to open simple menu and from there use the B button to get to the upper menu layer. Okay, now we can use the shoulder buttons to navigate over to the console section and let's enter it by pressing A. Now, as you can see, we got all our ROMs here together with the box art and if you press the Y button, you can switch over to the full screen mode and scroll through your ROMs using the D-pad up and down and that's it. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and got an idea of how to configure your emulator systems in Simple Menu. If you liked the video, please let me know with a thumbs up and if you haven't done yet, feel free to subscribe to my channel so we'll see each other again in my next videos. Thanks for watching and enjoy your RG350 using Simple Menu. Bye!